Uh oh, it's not letting me do that. What's happening? Oh god. Is the game just being a pain? There we go. Okay, I can move it now. Bear with me here. How's that? I'm kind of looking the same. Okay, there we go. That seems to be good. No. What? Okay, that's as far as I can move. Let me know how that's looking. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Leave the cutscene. Looks good to me. Okie dokie. All right. Well, I am going to leave it to the three of you. Let's do some Silent Hill. All right. Hello, everyone. We're back again. And this time we are running the first Silent Hill game I ever ran, which is this game. And I actually have Kat to thank for that. Um, she actually helped me a lot with setup for this game. Can be a little bit of a pain to get running on PC. Mm -hmm. Classic old Silent Hills that just don't want to work properly without a bit of finagling. Indeed. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the first puzzle. The game has yeah, puzzles, exactly. so you that one right away. So, of course, we are doing no QSQL, which means uh, no quick save, no quick load. Um, easy, easy. So in three, two, one, we shall begin. Um, and with this being the PC version, by the way, you do need an IGT timer if you do want to run this game. Um, it was a rule that was made back in May, I want to say, or was it like mid-April or something like that? So that is something to keep in mind as we are running through the nightmare here, and we are about to get punched in the face a lot because we need this fine gentleman here to Ooh. kill us. We do get the stab, which means we are getting what I like to call the medium. Oh, double stab, which means I'm probably getting somewhere in the 28, depending how this goes. Uh, the lowest you can get is about a 25 if you're lucky. Very hard Very to nice. do, however. Yeah, um, this, uh, this enemy here is completely RNG on how it's going to attack you. Obviously, as you can see, we wanted to go for all left hooks because left hooks do the most damage. So, uh, yeah, that was really good, actually. That was really, really good. Now, I have a question for you both. Does this not sound like endgame music to you? It does. You know? I love, this is probably my favorite track throughout the entirety of Silent Hill 3. It's just that one. So cozy. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And then we're just running here. Um, I'm on 2D controls, by the way. Um, the uh, optimal control method is 3D controls but they kind of make me a little ill, so I work with 2D controls. There are only two runners that I'm aware of that run 2D, and that is myself and former con console world record holder Aaron, who also runs Silent Hill 2 and has every one of those world records. As we continue the run, or to uh, grab the tongs there, because we have a key to grab, um, which is just lovely. Um, and of course, we're running past raptors. Uh, I believe they're called numb bodies, but I call them raptors. Like I said, I give all the enemies here like fun names because I'm like, I don't know what these things are called originally. And sometimes the names just stick because, you know, why not? So we have our key, but the raptors have multiplied. Oh no. Little not tiny oh, no. numb bodies. Not multiplying raptors. We've got to run. <laughs> and I used to call the closers Nintendo 64s because they reminded me of uh, early 3D polygon games like your chameleon twists and whatnot. So I was just like, well, they look like a bunch of random shapes. So clearly they're Nintendo 64s. And then 4058 is our code. I accidentally clicked it there. Luckily, IGT does not run when you're looking at that. So four zero. Mm. Come on, zero. And this is the first puzzle that we interact with into the game and it's completely RNG on how those numbers are going to appear so as a runner we tend to just recognize what the numbers are just from the edges uh, to not have to because usually you'd have to put the books onto the shelf and then it gives you the code in full but instead we just look at it and go okay it's 4058 
Yes. This game, a lot of puzzles are RNG. So, unlike Silent Hill Origins, it's like, oh, what is this puzzle? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I gotta solve it. Um, of course, we have aggressive dogs. I used to think that the dogs were, if you have aggressive dogs in the mall, you're gonna get less aggressive dogs in the subway. That's really not the case. Dogs don't really communicate like that, and um, you're just gonna get what you're gonna get. Um, although my pathing has gotten better these days. So we picked up the flashlight, and unlike Silent Hill Origins, we need to have the flashlight on as she does a little dance dance revolution through the door. Um, because Heather can't see anything without the flashlight on. That is a big difference between her and Travis. Of course, we're yep. going to hope that we don't get sandwiched here. And we're not, because they're very far apart. Yay. I also just wanted to note, uh, you'll probably notice that Abby gets kind of, whenever she goes to a door, you'll see that Heather tends to, you know, she she wants to pivot and go look at the enemies instead. That is an easy feature. It is not something that you have on any other difficulty higher than easy. It's just something that happens and it's very, very frustrating, especially when you're in a room full of enemies and you just want to go through the, the damn door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know that auto-aim was just easy mode. I thought that was all difficulties. No. Oh. No, 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 no. That's also what I call DDRing. Uh, so, again, my naming conventions are weird. I apologize. No, you're fine. You're fine. I figured that's what you were mentioning. I was like, yeah, she, she does that. Heather, Heather likes to move around the door before she enters it. <laughs> Have to make a reference to another Konami game, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, DDR, Silent Hill. Sure, why it works not? Out. Cause we're heading pretty sure here. The, pretty sure the intro song to Silent Hill 3 is on DDR. <laughs> yes, it is, and I forget which one. Also, that room can be a little tough uh, when starting out because it will sp the camera will spin. One of the things about Silent Hill 3 2D controls is that you're, you have to work around the camera. You cannot control the camera because if you try to move the camera, which is possible, Heather's movement will change, whereas 3D controls, you're in control of everything. Yeah. And here we so, have our friends, the bees. Time to go crack a nut. Indeed. Silent Hill is the only game where you'll have to crack open a nut to get a, nut, a puzzle item. This is, my question when we get to this point is we got a moonstone from here, which is not a normally occurring thing inside of walnuts. Who in their right mind is going around collecting moonstones, putting them in walnuts, and what, gluing it back together? Who does that? <laughs> Crazy people in Silent Hill do that, apparently. Let's blame it on all Leonard. That we don't... <laughs> That's all fair. Leonard's doing. Of course, we'll, we'll we'll see Leonard soon enough. We'll have we'll have to have a good call, you know, a good talk. Yeah. Right. It's just a good talk, right? <laughs> no. No. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Just trying to run away. And so we're coming up on our first boss fight and getting rid of that moonstone. And the dog did not interfere. Usually, you want the dog eating because it guarantees you that you're not going to have the possibility of DDRing through the door. Um, if it's not eating, it'll try to run at you and she'll try to aim at it. And it's just like, no, please, thank you. And here we have the very long climbing section. And this boss fight is really weird in terms of how much time it tells you it's taken. Because as you'll notice here, as we get into the fight, depending how this goes, um, it's going to take a few seconds, two, three, four. Five, six. There we go. Set. Hey! Very and, nice. And I instinctively go to hit the split button, even though I'm not running any splits. Um, <laughs> you got every time. <laughs> you can get six shots off every time. It's the seventh shot that you kind of got to wait there for a second for, and it might work, it might not work. Uh, the lowest amount of shots it takes to kill him is six. Um, however, on HD, you can take up to eight. Um, 
joyous of occasions. So now we've ran away from Douglas mm. and we're in the subway. The shortest section in the game. Uh, lengths per section are subway, sewer. Um, after that, it's uh, the church, hilltop, mall, hospital, and then um, uh, the amusement park being the longest. So yep. uh, that is a thing. And here okay, we go. Is, uh, very quick section. It's a lot of point A, point B, grab item, get this door open, and get out of here and go home. Uh, but home is... Uh... <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Silent Hill. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Um, also, there is a um, reference to a horror movie in here. Uh, from Jacob's Ladder, Jacob's Ladder, nineteen ninety nine. Also, we just picked up the uh, Nutcracker, but I have to ask Chat and uh, the lovely ladies in commentary: Does that not look like something you would use for like tires or some sort of mechanical repair? Because that's what it reminds me of. It doesn't that's look like a Nutcracker. That's because that's what it, 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 it looks like a wrench. Like, let's look at yeah, it looks like a wrench. Yeah, I'm I don't like, know. So but I don't so, know for if some, some reason that's a nutcracker. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> did something get lost in translation or, or or what here? And just to make sure everyone caught that, we just used that maybe nutcracker to break open literally steel chains. That's the thing that we did. We didn't use it to break open the walnut from earlier. No, but steel chains, that's perfect. Also, this enemy here only spawns uh, if you pick up the shotgun, by the way. So if you wanted to do a shotgunless run, you wouldn't have to worry about the big man. And here we get the shot of the trash. That is somewhat rare with 2D controls, though you can get it manipulated depending how you take that turn. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I was just going to mention, if it was a padlock, you can technically break open a padlock with two wrenches. Also, if you're paying attention to the uh, street direction there, that is your uh, Jacob's Ladder reference is that street name um and here we go the dogs they can cause you Auto to there we go. uh they can cause you to go through the platform on 2d controls um so that's a thing that used to happen to me all the time in early game um unfortunately uh it doesn't give you any benefit and here we're counting uh, the garbage cans. Once you've passed the third one, you can now start heading towards the stairs. You can start to head towards them at any point, but there's a chance you could hit like one of the steel beams or another garbage can. So I usually wait till after the third one. And here we go, all aboard the train. And Ooh, she's going, going to, uh, you know, act surprised that the train doors close. Have you never used a subway before? <laughs> And here just we have. Just want to say it'd be really cool if a five dollar donation train started while we're on the train. Just throwing out ideas. Choo choo. Hint, hint, nudge nudge. Now, if these raptors hit us, depending how they hit us, that's 0. 0.7 seconds. But if they knock you down, that's four. That's four seconds. I may have played this game a lot to the point where I was timing things a lot. So unfortunately, we have lost 0. 0.7 seconds thanks to that raptor hitting us. And we've now been also introduced to giant raptors. Oh, joy. Yay. Yeah, especially the, the large numb bodies or raptors. Uh, they can definitely body block pretty hard, and their range is pretty wild as well. Uh, like the dogs in Origins, they also have pretty insane reach if you let them get near you at all. Uh, it is not a fun experience when you're trying to get to a door and all of a sudden this giant raptor comes behind you and knocks you over. <laughs> yes, there's actually a raptor in the sewers. In fact, that can possibly cause you eight seconds worth of time loss if he were to hit you twice. Um, I've never had it to where he hits me twice. Also, the bees just got scarier, by the way, because there's nothing more frightening than a bee that is walking because somehow they're faster and they hit and it's like ow could you not and here's our first and here is said giant raptor that can cause you a possible 8 seconds worth of time loss if he hits you twice ooh he tried he tried to go for that lunge yes he did although sometimes the little raptor can also block his path on our way back through which is nice 
Um, however, he will do the head turn move, and while I've never been hit by the head turn move, I believe that's another 0.7 second time loss. Uh, but again, it's never happened. Um, as we're coming up to two more walking bees. Um, walking bees are all over the place here, and it's quite frightening because it's like, they're gonna hit me. And you're just like, no, please don't hit me. And coming up to this door here, we're gonna have an extended black screen. This only exists in the PC version, by the way, the HD collection version, and I believe the PS2 version do not have this, but I'm using that black screen as an opportunity to put my thumb in the top right corner so that I can make the turn a little bit faster. And then, of course, we have this raptor. This raptor can give us a short turn if it wants to. I do not know how to make it give it to me every time, but there is that possibility as we fill up the oil and short turn, short turn, short turn, no. Um, sometimes he's nice, other times not so much. Let's get a little extra exercise today. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to activate this. That's not actually gonna work because of how she's facing. This um, is very finicky. Um, it's probably the most finicky object right up there with the door in the amusement park that requires a chain for yeah, most... those two, the hip boxes for those two items. It, specifically those two items can be very frustrating when you're just, you're like, no, I'm right in front of you. What do you mean? Just, just, okay, move over to the right. No, still no? Come on! Yes. <laughs> Uh, one thing that I want to note when going over the overpasses, because of the camera angle change, Heather's movements will be very erratic, so you want to wait until the camera goes back behind her before you readjust. Otherwise, you could lose much more time. Also, falling into this water is another four-second time loss, so do try to stay out of the water, lest you wish to meet your demise. Oh, dear. No swimming today, team. And then here we have another bridge, and here is where we are going to do dryer bounce. Why is it called dryer bounce? Because I kind of bounce off the um, the garbage to pick up the dryer and then leave. Um, and I just call it dryer bounce because that's the item I'm picking up. There are three bounces I will do throughout the run. Uh, rope bounce and desk bounce. Uh, desk bounce was the first bounce that I kind of developed, if you will followed by dryer bounce, and then rope bounce was literally, I think, within the last month and a half. And by the way, we will no longer see giant raptors for the rest of the run. They are gone forever, and we are now murdering Splitworm Jr. with the dryer and throwing it in there. So rest no. in peace, Splitworm and Splitworm Jr. And then we are... Can we get an F in chat for Splitworm Jr., please? This is tragic. And then we have bees. That's the sound of four bees, by the way, flying at once. It's quite noisy. But we're done with the sewers. Loud. And on to the apartments, a.k.a. Hilltop, and then where you live. As mm -hmm. we're just running here, running up the stairs... Now, the weird thing is, as I mentioned about the camera being behind you, if you try to adjust your movement when not on the stairs, she acts the same way as if you're trying to uh, fix her movement on the bridges there, or overpasses, and it's just like, okay, that's a little weird. And the same thing is going to happen later on, too, to a different section where you're on the stairs themselves, and it's like, but the camera's behind. Yeah, I don't care. I'm still going to move erratically if you try to move me. And it's like, all right, Heather, you, you do you, I guess. And here we have Hilltop. So remember in Silent Hill Origins when we had that lumberyard spot? Well, there's also something like that in here where we hear sort of a bar dropping. And it's like, okay, what did that? We never know because we never see the bar and we never see what threw it. The scariest scare, the unknown. Exactly. Ah! So there's a bit of a black screen here, and for it, I will move my thumb to the bottom right corner in order to make that turn a little smoother instead of running directly into a wall when going back through. 
And then we just fall and go on through. Of course, more bees. Bees are everywhere, man. They are also much bigger than the bees in, in Resident Evil that we saw earlier. <laughs> They're also much bigger than normal bees, just for the record, in case anyone hasn't seen a bee in real life before. <laughs> And then... Wait, they're not mega juiced like that? Oh gosh, I hope not. <laughs> no, I, no, I would like to imagine, or not imagine having bees of that size or uh, IRL, you know? I'm just going to the park and it's like, oh, there's a bee and everyone sprints away. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm running it out! I mean, for anyone that's Canadian, there used to be a pretty beefy bee on YTV Fuzz Paws. There was a Fuzz Paw that was a bee, and it was kind of huge. I don't remember his name. I feel like that's like triggering some nostalgia moments in my head, but I can't recall like what it was exactly. Also, we will no longer see raptors for the rest of the run. And also, I have picked up two out of six health drinks. We will want to pick up six health drinks throughout the run. You can get away with five, but you've really got to have confidence before you're entering God. Because if you're in orange or uh, yellow health on God, you will need the three healing items. Uh, we use three of them for running through Silent Hill, and then we use three of them for God. Two of them if we're below yellow health. And now and we are. Anyone who may, may not see this game before, God is the final boss. We're not trying to convert anyone to any religion here. This is this is the game. Yes. Just a heads up. <laughs> also, we are about to be sent to hell by a very clean bathtub. I don't know if the devs were trying to send a message about cleaning your bathtub or not. Clean your Probably bathtubs, chat. Filthy around here. Yes. And now we are going to meet the biggest jerk in Silent Hill history, Vincent. Oh, I thought you were going to mention the slurpers because I was like, yep, <laughs> heck yeah, they're, <laughs> they're terrible. Uh, so we switched out raptors for now slurpers, those little fun guys on the uh, on the ground there. Yes. What they like to do is they like to grab at Heather's feet and they like to slurp. Uh, it is not ideal when they do grab you because you do lose a lot of time from them. So thanks. hopefully they're very nice today. Yes. I'm sorry, someone in chat was talking about the B movie and what that would be like if it had the Silent Hill bees. Oh I'm God. kind of dying. Oh no, 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 McSqueezy, no. <laughs> oh, please, no, I need to sleep tonight. I don't need these nightmares. I mean, the B movie's kind of nightmare fuel already. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Right, so right now Abby's just kind of grabbing a few items because we need to burn a picture and in order to do that we need a liver, matches, and some uh, chemicals of some sort. Uh, don't ask why we need the liver and the, all this stuff. I'm sure it's perfectly fine, but uh, yeah, we need this weird concoction of items. And it should be noted that if you try to do that right in front of the bucket, the game's like, no, you're too far away, despite the fact that you're touching the yeah. bucket. So you kind of want to go more touching the picture than touching the bucket. It's really weird. And then we avoided Slurper Hall. A lot of runners call it the worst hallway in the game. I disagree. Um, I will point out the worst hallway in the game when I get there. Also, this room can kind of be a pain when you're starting out on 2D controls. Um, it took quite a while to start getting a hang of it in terms of how to move around it, because the camera likes to change a lot uh, when going through it. And also, there is now a dog in this room. Uh, it's just far in the corner, so that's why she didn't auto-aim through the door. But sometimes the dog likes to come and say hello. We are now heading to the life insurance area. Um, and there's going to be two more slurpers in the way. Silent Hill has life insurance? That's got to be a losing company. There's no way they're making money on this. I mean, to Every be fair... Everybody else is making money. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, we're not in Silent Hill yet. Shocker, ah, I know. I'm sorry. This place is so much better for life insurance, clearly. <laughs> clearly. 
Not like, yeah, you know, monsters to worry about. Impending death. Giant Fine. bees. It's all good. Giant bees, yeah. Yeah. But we're done seeing raptors, so clearly if there aren't raptors, the life insurance is brilliant. Indeed. Oh, yeah, of course. As we are running home because our father is expecting us. Very much so. Probably waiting to, like, eat dinner or something. Because that's what families do. They wait for everybody before eating or something like that. Especially in the it early dinner 2000s. Time. And we make it home. But, oh no! Our father has been murdered. Oh dear. Uh -huh. What? Also, this spoilers, it's Harry Mason from Silent Hill 1. Done. <gasps> Done. <gasps> Done. Audible crafts. So now we are taking revenge. Also, I want to point out that she wants revenge against Claudia and has plenty of opportunity to deal with Claudia, but never deals with Claudia when she has the opportunity to do so. Just want to point that out there. Well, instead we have to fight missionary which missionary didn't put much up of uh, didn't put much of fight but that fight can be a bunch of memes mm -hmm. if missionary loves to run away so thankfully he was being quite nice today and of course in the car ride to silent hill douglas brings up james very briefly um as apparently he was sent to silent hill to find james after the events of silent hill 2 but of course never found James. So I'm channeling my inner Silent Hill origins right now, and I feel compelled to ask whether or not this is smoke or fog, since that was such an important question last time. This is fog. Yeah. All right, thank fog. you. I feel better knowing that. And of course, we have the ice cream truck. Now, if you're trying to figure out your way through Silent Hill, because obviously it's big, very hard to see, you were going to look for the red car, the white van, then you were going to go into the gas station slash repair shop. Once you hit the ice cream trunk, you want to heal. And then you're going to look for the white car, blue car. Do not go fully right yet because you can sometimes hit that. Also, the camera likes to change because it's kind of like, hey, come check out Heaven's Night. Do it. Do it. Even though we don't have the music for, the, for that in this game. And it made me very sad when I discovered that. Then you're going to look for the two red signs that I just passed. And we're in the hospital. The hospital's layout is also the very same in Silent Hill 2. As we head up to the second floor. Also, I would highly recommend skipping uh, elevator rides as it kind of makes the camera a bit more cooperative with you. So we're going to head in here, grab the shotgun ammo, grab the nail polish, and the perfume. The perfume is important for something much later in the game. And then we come across the first code, which never changes depending on your t um, puzzle difficulty. So on easy, it's always 4639. For some reason, I decided to run away from the door. And then we have this room here, M4, which has another puzzle, where we're going to check out the clock, which is 504. Um, you can actually see the time on the clock uh, if you zoom in. And it's kind of cool, but also I don't have a zoom button because it might be a 3D controls thing only. Not 100% sure. So we grab the camera and we head down to the first floor to see the world's most amazing art piece, not in a museum. Whoa, that sounds exciting. Indeed. I'm waiting excitedly. So we go to it looks so awfully similar to normal waiting, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> and here it is. And we Whoa! Need, and we need wow, to look is... at it to be able to see the key slash interact. If you try to just do the thing, she'll go, I can't use that here. And it's like, oh. So even if you know that the key is there, you still have to look at it. Luckily, it pauses the IGT timer when you do look at it. We exit and head to the basement. Because we That was one of the most beautiful pieces of artwork I have ever seen. Just the the symmetry, the arrangement, the elegance, the choice of materials. Brilliant. I just really like the beetle. And then That's also a very good point. <laughs> 8963 or 8936 is our code. 8936, 8936, 8936. So that's what we're going for. 
for the 8936. Thankfully, you don't have to travel too far to remember the code because it's right here. 8936. Yes. There we go. All right. 8936 has been complete. And now we're going to S12. Now, obviously, sometimes it's hard to notice the numbers, but you'll always know because the nurse is just before the door. And then we have a conversation with Leonard. And then Leonard wants us to go meet him for reasons. And also gun nurse can be painful, so we don't want to be shot by them. And we run away. Now, we are going to go through some very, very rusted, interesting corridors. You might be asking why they are interesting. You will see momentarily why they are. Again, more nurses. Run away. That's what we gotta do. All right. So, we are now in the rusted hallways. You might be asking yourself, why is it interesting? Because despite how rusted these hallways are, these gates, also very rusty, very functional. Doesn't make That's a lot impressive. of sense. They do work surprisingly well given their environment. Yeah. One thing with these gates, uh, if you were to do a... if Outside of marathon cases, if you're just purely off of uh, IGT... What we would do is we would save and then quick load uh, beforehand. Obviously, this is no quick save, no quick load, so we wouldn't do that. But it does save a, a tiny amount of time, but I found that interesting. Nice. And then it just the door's already open when you uh, when you load back into the game. It's great. You don't have to wait. And oh Saving. no, the gates oh. are coming behind oh. us. Oh, what no. are we going to do? We're trapped. Oh wait, let's click on this culty symbol and uh, get teleported. And now, chat, we are going to meet the most powerful character in all of Silent Hill, Mr. Core Strength. You might be asking, why is he called Mr. Core Strength? Pay attention to his arms and his legs. You'll notice that they are not offering much support. So using our deductive skills, we can surmise that it is his core strength keeping him afloat. Also, check out the green shoe. Because green shoe. I, yes, specifically the green shoe. <laughs> don't don't pay attention to the lady. It's fine. That the, the green shoe though. It's very it, nice. it, indeed. Very fashionable. Yeah. And then we are moving along. We don't actually spend a lot of time in the hell hospital as we head to the second floor. Uh, the pattern that I do is second floor, third floor, basement three, one, because when I was starting to learn this run, I didn't realize that one, you can skip the elevator rides, and two, that uh, it pauses the IGT timer when taking the elevators. So I was like, well, clearly it makes sense to go second floor to the third floor, right? And then going down to the basement from the third floor makes perfect logical sense. It does, though. Yes. And then uh, we're going to move. And then we're going to see a character as we're going to fill the bucket of blood. Um, this character right here reminds me of Walter from Silent Hill 4. Don't ask me why. Also, we've equipped the perfume because the perfume is going to aid us in the amusement park coming up shortly. Um, also, I kind of make it... I kind of made up that the um, slurpers don't like it so it keeps them away doesn't really but I like to pretend it does because most of the time the slurpers leave me alone after I equip it and now it's time to meet Leonard face to face so we've grabbed the key also you'll notice that I just could grab the key that's an easy mode thing or easy puzzle only any higher puzzle level it's like Nah, you have a puzzle to solve to grab this key. Yeah, one thing with easy is that it actually cuts out like a good amount of puzzles, so that's why it would be the most competitive. Indeed. So now we've got Leonard. There is a way to get him to not swim. So what I'm going to do is fire. Let go of the fire button, hold fire and back, or back and fire at the same time, and it can mostly keep him from swimming. It doesn't work every time, but it does work a lot of the time. So we're just going to pump him full of shotgun shots, and then he's going to be no more. And then we move 
right along back to the motel. Of course, there's a brief cutscene with Claudia and Vincent that we will barely see here in just a moment. Um, also, it should be noted that the um, HD version of this game is a lot darker. So, Claudia knows that her father is dead. Um, and she's kind of mad at Vincent because Vincent was the one who sent us to Leonard. And there's just a conversation where Vincent's like, you hated him. And it's like, why, well, yes, yes, I did. And she calms down and doesn't care that her father's dead anymore. Yay, I guess. <laughs> so now we're running back. Uh, it's pretty much the same sort of landmarks, only we're going to heal once we hit the ice cream truck um, to keep our stamina up. I believe the last possible moment is right here at these barrels. I do believe. And then, of course, white van, red car, and then we can turn in. Um, Vincent is going to be in our motel room for some reason. I don't know why. It's kind of like... How did you get in here? Why are you in here? Please leave. Again, I'm not a huge fan of Vincent. I'm in the minority on that one, but I'll stick to the minority on that one. That is fair. I just want to know how Vincent got there. When did you get there, sir? Did you get into Douglas's trunk? Indeed. Also, that's the other question. When leaving Hilltop, how did he get out? Because there was the monster in front of the door. And I don't think the monster works like, say the magic words, and then five minutes later it comes back anyway. So it's like, did he jump out of a window or something? I don't know. So this is the last time we have to heal when running through Silent Hill. We are running straight. Usually I wait till I see the second dog. I don't know the last possible moment um, for healing here because they are very generous with how soon or how long it takes you because I'm pretty sure the second I pass the red car I could totally heal and be fine but I usually wait to see the second dog. So now we're here where the nightmare started and of course we have our boy Robbie the Rabbit everywhere. Yes! Best he's, part of the game, hands down. He's got a little bit of red on him. Um, and again... It adds yeah. character. We've got closers. We're going to go in here. More Robbie plushies everywhere. And of course, we're here to get a key. We got the short key. Very nice. Um, if you were to do the amp... Is, is it amp heal? Is that is that what the full heal is called? Ampule. Ampule. If you're doing the ampule method, I believe that's where you grab this, the one for healing against God. Pretty sure. By the way, the healing methods, whether you're doing the six um, health drinks or you're going with the ampule, it's a, it's a second difference. So it's like, you know, pick what's, it, pick what's comfortable for you um, as we run up here. Uh, to uh, unlock the door and turn off the roller coaster. I don't know why the roller coaster's on, but the roller coaster's on. As we keep going, and we're almost to our favorite part of the game chat. Oh, yes. Ooh. Does it involve a guy named Danny? It sure does. Oh, he's my favorite. So, also, Heather survives the fall from getting hit by a roller coaster. Um, so we're turning in and chat. Welcome to the Borley Haunted Mansion. We're so glad you came. Please come inside and look around. When you feel you're ready, then go through the door. Okay. This is actually You're really enthusiastic and ready to go on this. <laughs> I love haunted houses. A family of four was We're sliced into bloody pieces in this room. Oh, the cries of the children. The murderer was caught. Do you know why he said he killed his family? Because I felt I had to. Anyway, I'm lying. It's all just a joke. 
I wanted to scare you, that's all. By the way, this is the perfect hydrate spot, because you do have to sit here unless you're playing on New Game Extra. Um, though you do still have to activate Danny on New Game Extra. Um, that is a thing that is consistent across all patterns. Or, uh, all categories, not patterns. Except for UFO ending. And there's Danny. A quiet young man, but quite friendly, as you can quite see. He was so eager to meet you. His hometown is New Orleans, but he came here after first losing his way. Oh, maybe you might know. Where is the path to heaven? It turns out I don't. I'm sorry, Danny. I can't help you. Danny, we love you. Bye. Just keep hanging out. Quite old. Now, on... Is hard the only one where you actually have to solve a puzzle, or does normal also have to solve a puzzle? Uh, for here? Uh, so hard mode, it's... This hallway's a little bit trickier. Okay. Uh, I believe you have to put on the bulletproof vest and walk. I can't quite remember, though. I think it's something of that nature, though. That was supposed to be the exit, but it seems that no one wants you to leave. Everyone really likes you. They want you to stay with them. Forever. I have to agree with them. Don't be afraid. Dying is much easier than living. Shoutouts to Umbrella Jill, by the way, who helped me with the hallway. I used to be really slow, and now I'm somewhat okay at this hallway. Um, this hallway is a is a sequence of right and left turns, and each time you go through the door, uh, it's basically the same thing, but just shorter camera angles, so you can't see the turn as early as you would in the previous hallway. Yes, and uh, also if you get hit by the red light, you die. So don't get mm -hmm. hit by the red don't, light. Funny. Don't get consumed by the void. Yes. We saw another Robbie. And then here we go with the red shoe. Why there is a red, red shoe on the middle of a platform in the middle of nowhere, I don't know. And also here is the last health drink pickup for us as we also grab the chain. There's Robbie again. Be careful of that B. Very lucky that I was able to uh, dodge. And then we have, this is the uh, door that we had mentioned earlier that's pretty finicky. Don't actually go to the handle, you just want to target the door. Oh dear. Apparently I wasn't close enough. There we go. And now we yeah, activate the button. is quite finicky. <laughs> Here we go. And then enter. Hey Douglas, bye Douglas. Yes, Douglas isn't alive anymore. He's dead. Because I skipped the cutscene, you have no proof that he's alive. Oh. Grab the doll head, which suspiciously looks like a certain fruit. I wonder what fruit it looks like. Well, perhaps we'll find out when we give it to the person here. Snow White. Snow White doesn't do anything with a doll head, but she does something with an apple. Perhaps maybe that is the fruit that the doll head looks like. And then here we go. It's now time to fight our evil clone self th thing. Trollessa! But of course we have to deal with some horses. So I go into the save menu here because it skips the startup. And one. There are 11 horses to shoot in total. Two. Despite the fact that they are plastic, they make horse sounds and also bleed. A little odd. No real horses were harmed in the making of this here video game. Thank you. <laughs> One thing to note is that we're sometimes talking to the horses. That's not just for fun. That actually pauses the in-game timer. If you notice, the horses are on a cycle. So when they're at the top of their cycle, we can't hit them. So instead, we talk to them until they're back in range for us. And that just saves us speedrunning time. Mm -hmm. Indeed. This game is very weird when it comes to what pauses the IGT timer and what doesn't. There's actually a book in front of the exit to Hilltop where if you accidentally talk to it, it'll also pause the timer. 
However, there are other things that Heather can interact with, like notes and whatnot, that won't pause the timer. And we wait for that clink sound because it allows us to once again skip the startup um, for this cutscene. And here she is, our evil clone, come back to life to do things. And unfortunately, I did not get a two cycle. But we are going to run over here. We're going to kind of stare at the center here, because apparently it helps manipulate her spawn location. Um, so we fire and fire. We got a two cycle there. Um, again, go back, stare, kind of manipulates it. Um, fire again. Just like that. Yes. Yeah, so Alessa here has uh, a few different phases with different weapons, and each time is a little bit more rough depending if you give her the space. But as long as you keep her down and you keep her spaced, and she doesn't run away, this fight is pretty, pretty easy peasy. But the unfortunate thing is when she runs. So trying to avoid that as much as possible. But Abby, you did a great job. Good job. That was a good fight. Yes, and it should be noted that she cannot die from a shot on the ground. She has to die from a oh. shot standing up. That is correct. And now we have this hallway. Uh, very dangerous to mash buttons. Um, or, well, the next one, because you see the writing on the wall. She can turn and read it, and it does not pause the timer. Another example of things that'll pause the timer and won't pause the timer, depending how you interact with them. It will pause the timer for interacting with this door up here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Also, the stained glass window also pauses the IGT timer. Um, I didn't do that on purpose. Um, that just happens sometimes when mashing. So we have five cards to gather. And... Of course, closers are back. Um, the big guys are back. I believe they're called cancers. Um, and then we have the ghost girl. So, one, two. Um, for this part, um, if we enter and exit three times, minimum of three times, uh, we can skip her walking cycle. You need to step a minimum of two times each time you go through the door for the trick to work. Um... It can go higher than three times. Uh, six times is still faster than waiting for her to get to her location. Um, and there we go. We have the moon. And, of course, Douglas gives us a book. And he's like, by the way, you haven't been killing monsters this entire time. Um, and Heather becomes mortified at the fact that she may have been actually killing real people uh, in that cutscene. And it's like... Oh. And here we go. We pick up another card and also shotgun shells. We need a total of 14 shots if every shot goes off perfectly to kill God. Um, this is also the final section of the game, which is the church. Why there is a church attached to a carousel, I will never know. It seems really, really odd. Per perfectly normal, if you ask me. If you say so. <laughs> and then... This is Silent Hill. They have coding zoning laws than we do. It's okay. Exactly. And then, of course, we have uh, the ghost girl coming back. Um, I call it ghost girl skip. Um, the community calls it footsteps. Um, one, two. Um, again, similar thing. Walk into steps. One, two. Turn around leave sometimes she can be finicky about this also you kind of got to get worried because you can get hit uh by the closers so you kind of got to be like i hope they're not too close <clears throat> and then here yeah, is oh go ahead oh no it's fine Glockus, we are now filled with knowledge uh with the ghost girl uh as soon as you hear her stop crying it's pretty much a good indication that you're good to go through the door uh However, if you continuously hear her crying, you just want to continue to keep going in and out of the room until you stop hearing it. Yeah, and unfortunately, with the second room, you kind of get to go pretty far into it before she'll start crying again. So you're like, 
Uh, darn it. You started crying again. With the first room, not so bad, because it is a very short distance uh, between point A and point B. Also, sometimes when you go through that door, by the way, she'll kick uh, the big guy there uh, as she goes through the door, and it's kind of funny. Of course, Mr. Core Strength has returned as he's crawling around there. And here is Desk Bounce. You might be wondering why it's called Desk Bounce, because I'm using a desk as a point of reference for a time to turn. Because, unfortunately, just trying to go straight doesn't really work because of the camera changes and also the fact that there's a desk in the middle of the classroom. It's kind of like, wow, aren't you just not nice? Also, you can spawn a missionary in this room if you go look at the, uh, the big guy that's in the hallway there. So, also not really the best thing to do. And now we have the five cards that we need. Uh, the pattern for this puzzle does not change unless you change puzzle difficulties. Um, and also here's where that Yu-Gi-Oh! reference comes in. So, in the series Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Season 2 uh, in particular, the main antagonist of Season 2 uses a deck based on tarot cards. And so, each card has a number. For example, number 18, the moon. And since we have a moon card, I sometimes go number 18, the moon. Also, the fool is a card. I can never remember what the, the number is off the top of my head. But it's just kind of funny. Um, but first, we're going to equip the shotgun, and then we are going to... Equip the first card, which is the High Priestess. The moon goes in the top left. The uh, Eye of Night goes in the middle. The Fool on, or no, the Hangman on the bottom, and then the Fool on the top left. And then here is, an RNG. is the worst hallway in the game. The way the camera keeps changing, the Heather will turn around and be all crazy. Yes, I made that look pretty easy, but let me assure you. This hallway is trash, and it's the worst. So now, in this cutscene, we puke up God, Claudia eats God, and then gives, and, you know, there's her clothes because God is now here. Heather is actually pretty upset because she was like, I was supposed to kill you. Um, and then she's like, I'm going to kill this thing now called the transitive property of mathematics. It makes complete sense. <laughs> Time's gonna be coming up very, very soon. This fight is basically just shoot her while she's up and then shoot her in the head. And uh, it's pretty much rinse and repeat while healing simultaneously, just to make sure we don't die. And uh, I think one more hit, right? I believe so. I didn't and count for uh, the whole thing, by the way, is. time. That is time. GG! Now, one way you can figure out how you're doing full damage, by the way, is that you don't see any sparks. If you start to see sparks, there's a good chance you didn't hit her with full damage, though sometimes the game likes to trick you. Um, and also, if she's typically doing hand swipes, there's a good chance you hit her on the side of the head, which means you haven't done full damage because you will see sparks. So that is something to keep in mind. You want to hit her straight forward. Uh, for that. Hydration is key, Chad, especially when you've been talking a lot. So here we have the ending. She's mourning the loss of her father. Um, it's quite sad. Uh, there's also a thing that's going to be hanging. I don't know what that is what is hanging off of her there. Um, but a thing is hanging. And supposedly, from rumors and things, when she's standing up here to walk out, um, there was supposed to be a baby crying? Um, but there is no baby crying, and she just kind of looks back. Um, the Silent Hill song which is a thing we will all get to experience. Uh, references that she's a mother, but again, we never see this child in the game, so it's like, where is this coming from? So it is quite the mystery. 
And then, you know, we get this jokey part with Douglas, which also makes no sense given the circumstances of what we've just gone through. Wait, he's alive? Oops, I may have... <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Let's go, Douglas! It's also funny, in the HD version of the game, they actually added a bunch of blood to him, so on his right side he's completely bleeding, and it's like... I don't know how long you've been sitting there, Douglas, but I don't think you're alive. Given how much blood is in the HD version of this cutscene. So again, Heather makes a joke that you're still alive, and, you know, thinking that Douglas is gonna die. But no, it's just a joke. There is an ending in the game where she does actually kill Douglas. It's very hard to get, though. You have to um, accumulate 4,000 points worth of damage. Or not damage, but 4,000 points. So each enemy is 10 points. Each boss, I think, is 150. Memory serves me correctly. And damage is one point. And... Or HP loss is one point per how much HP you lose. And you have to talk in the confessional, which is 1,000 points. Um, however, if you're playing on hard difficulty, you can kind of skip that with the sewers because there's a part where everything goes red spaghetti, as Mr. McSqueezy would say, and you take one point of damage for sitting there, so you could sit there for about six and a half minutes and have the full amount of points. Um, but you still have to, like, survive the entire run uh past that point so it's like also healing past 500 points of damage also loses you points i think we so. did it though gg Woo! again GG. yes so 40, we, 37, nice. yes and uh we do have 42 54 but now chat it is time for that incentive we mess we mentioned i hope you're ready to see some spectacular things as I load it up, head into the apartment. So here we have Heather at the apartment. I'm also going to show off something extra, which is that she has eye lasers. What? That's so cool! Yeah, and then new game plus. we have Sexy Beam Shupatsu. Whoa! Moon, magical girl! Blinding magical girl. Indeed. It's so stunning. <laughs> and of course, oh, more lasers. Uh, to get this ending, you need to kill 31 enemies with the lasers. You cannot kill them with anything else. And without any further ado, enjoy the UFO ending. Also, James just chilling in the background for some reason. Like this. And that's about it. What? <laughs> oh, Dad, you're the coolest. I take it Char has never seen this ending. <laughs> I don't remember it. Dude just karate kicks the board out of nowhere. This is great. Also, goodbye, Silent Hill. <laughs> and then, of course, we get the best song in the entire franchise. I'm sorry, Sugar Tender. Also, I like how they poke fun at the UFO ending, and yet they put one in every single game. 
I'm glad they do. I think it's worth it. <laughs> also, guys, thank you again so much, everyone. Your donations unlocked this absolutely beautiful cutscene. Thank you so much. <laughs> They also provide lyrics. I hope everyone has their best jam emotes going in chat. It's beautiful. I love this song. It's so good. Does everyone get their own verse in this? Yes. yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I can never do the fast parts and I feel bad. Oh, I can never do it either. You're fine. <laughs> Also, they do get progressively more drunk as well. True, too much sake. <laughs> I wonder if they meant side instead of sly. Maybe. Is this like character backstory revealed anywhere in game or is all of this being delivered solely through this song? <laughs> through this song. Yeah, pretty much through this song. Can't forget about Heather. Super fast part. And this is the part where they mention the children. And it's like, Young mom who goes it alone. Who? And then apparently in uh, Book of Memories, it mentions that she has two children. virtually might have been a bit of a bad time to clap virtually because <laughs> I don't know if you caught that they all die yeah did they oh. no more they gone yes and so that was the Silent Hill song thank you all for donating for the wonderfulness that is the Silent Hill song and I hope you all enjoyed the Magical Girl Transformation. Kat, would you like to promote yourself? Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Catlink. I stream on uh, Twitch.tv TV slash, forward slash Catlink. Uh, I do a lot of horror games and speedruns and all that stuff, but uh, more importantly, you should go love Abby's Corner and give her some follows and some love. Jeez and thank you. Go check her out. Don't check me out. Go check her out. Do it. 
Oh no! Um, hi, you can also follow me on twitch.tv forward slash Abby's Corner. Um, I stream a lot, speedrun a lot of games from Silent Hill to Ill Bleed to The Legend of Zelda and a lot of stuff in between that. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. So if you like speedruns of very weird variety, I'm your gal for that. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter uh, at Abby underscore Brander, uh, co-host under Abby's Corner. Um, I also have a YouTube archive channel of all my speedruns. I'm almost at 100. I know. Uh, but Congratulations. yeah. Congratulations. That's impressive. That's 100 runs, not 100 games. <laughs> By the oh, way. Good. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, I may be learning uh, Love 3, actually, shortly. Um, yes! Along, along with Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Uh, just to name a few games, as well as Ghost Percent and Pokemon Violet. Um, but yes. Um, oh yes, that reminds me. You can also uh, find me usually on the Lady Arcaders uh, channel as well. Uh, we are a collective of women in speed or in gaming in general. Uh, Char is also a part of the group. Um, yep. We do speed runs, challenge runs, just showing off your game. Um, I'll be actually over there later running Silent Hill Origins again uh, for uh, Girls Go Fast, which is also partnering with them for this weekend and doing some commentary tomorrow as well. Um, but yes, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Kat, thank you for joining me. Char, thank you uh, for joining. Char will also be with me uh, later on this evening for the other Origins run. Um, thank you again. Um, enjoy the rest of the runs this weekend. And all that jazz. Uh, thank you again very much. Thank you all so much. Uh, that was unironically the most fun I've ever had with a Silent Hill game, and I don't think it's particularly close. That was so delightful and weird. The UFO ending is weird, and I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, stick around, everybody. We will be back. The, the horror block is over, sadly, but we still have a lot of great runs coming out the rest of the night. Um, and into tomorrow, we still have a whole another 24 hours left, basically, of this event. Um, so we will be back very shortly with Spider-Man doing whatever a spider can. So stick around. We will be back very soon. <laughs>